focus on people and skills and making sure that we promote lifelong learning. This plan is also focused on making sure that companies adopt technology and invest in emerging technologies. And it's designed to help companies scale up and grow and succeed globally by making sure they have customers and the financing that they need. The plan that Innovation Minister Navdeep Bains refers to is the formation of technology superclusters. They are the five winners of a nine-month competition for $950 million in federal funding. Here are the successful applicants. They're perfectly geographically distributed. An advanced manufacturing supercluster in Ontario looks at ways to use innovation to increase production and be more efficient. BC's digital technology supercluster aims to boost the competitiveness for precision health, manufacturing, and resource and environment technologies. Atlantic Canada's ocean supercluster dives into sustainable development of the ocean economy. Saskatchewan's Protein Innovation Supercluster looks at ways to help Canada become the world leader in supplying plant-based proteins. The AI-powered supply chain supercluster in Quebec is focused on machine learning in retail, manufacturing, and infrastructure. Meanwhile, the Quebec government's Economic Advisory Council is calling on that province to spend four times more on artificial intelligence. That's $500 million over the next decade. It warns that without it, the province's status as a leader in machine learning will be in jeopardy. Here to discuss more why more government investment in AI is good for Quebec and for Canada for that matter, we're joined by Christopher Powell, Associate Professor at Polytechnique Montréal and the Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms. It's nice to see you, Christopher. Thanks for doing this. What, what's you. at stake here? Because, I mean, you see Quebec is so far out ahead of so many others. It's developed an international reputation. Why, why the need for more sort of government funding if it's doing so well? It's sort of a supply and demand thing. Right now, there's a huge demand for consuming the kinds of highly qualified people that the uh, academic institutions in Montreal are world-renowned for producing. And so by investing in education, essentially, we're going to be able to produce the kind of workforce that's going to essentially staff these large labs, research labs, and eventually development labs that uh, corporations that have been moving in have been, st have been standing up, uh, as well as our own companies, as well as our small and medium businesses that uh, start to learn more about how they can use uh, these techniques to help their own businesses uh, grow and be successful. I think critics of, of government money being involved in this would say that, that stuff's already happening and it, that international reputation has been developed and we're seeing both talent and investment coming to Quebec to try to, to get a piece of the action. Hasn't the sort of government funding part of this played its part already? Well, I think the growth is just phenomenal. I used to teach a class. It started off with one student in it. Uh, last, last time I taught it this, this semester, there's 100 students that were in the class. So the amount of uh, interest in this is growing uh, like exponentially. Uh, and essentially, for us to have the capacity to train and even just have office space for that many students, uh, that investment can be well placed. I mean, we have to be very intelligent on where it goes, how it goes, but definitely that, that is something that will help sustain the kind of growth that we're seeing. And, and I guess I started by asking this and never really got to it in terms of the question, what is yeah. at stake? What if we get this wrong? Uh, you know, are we looking at another sort of Blackberry did great for a little while and then sort of nothing was able to fill that, that void when it, when it eventually flamed out? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, you know, the world is a competitive place. Right now, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Alberta, we really have the lead in many really key uh, aspects of these kinds of technologies. Uh, many people at those locations have been intrinsically tied with some of the most important advances. And that's attracting talent, and we want to keep that talent coming here. We want to have people who are from here learn about that and make those the new innovations that are going to be uh, powering uh, even more uh, interesting developments in the future. So I, I think you know, other places will learn. They can learn fast. Uh, we have a head start. We want to keep on top of it. Uh, is, there, is it important for us to be able to draw a line and say, yes, we'll do this, but there, there needs to be you know, provisions within this to make sure that it's Canadian companies and not sort of you know, companies from the States or from Europe or whatever that are coming here for the funding and then risk leaving again if, if things begin to turn? It certainly, it certainly helps, but I think it's an important balance. We, every company has its own value chain on how it makes money. Uh, and what we need to do is make sure that we can encourage those companies that are not from Canada to come and have a significant presence 
presence here and have a real economic impact here, while at the same time supporting our own companies so that we can grow and have become have some global players of our own. And I think creating a whole ecosystem of that is the kind of thing that happens in places like Silicon Valley. There are companies that are from other countries in the valley. There's also companies that are from the valley. And we're going to hopefully create something just like that here in Montreal in particular. And this kind of funding is really essential to make that happen. And, and what does that success look like? I ask you what, what's at stake if we get it wrong. What, what, what happens if we get it right? What does that cluster, what does Montreal, what does it all look like if, well, if we figure yeah. this out? That it'll be so so much more interesting. I mean, when you go to the valley, you, you hear people talking about, you know, technology in the cafes. You hear people talking about the company that they're about to start in a cafe. There are cafes that are famous for people uh, because they made deals that made you know Facebook or made the other famous companies. And so I think that kind of culture could easily happen here uh, in Canada if the conditions are right. If we have an ecosystem, you need to have those players that sometimes a small company will be buy purchased by a larger company, and maybe that's the best thing for it, to actually have impact, actually have value in the real world. E each idea sort of has to find its own way to sort of have real impact. And, and that requires a mix of companies that are already established, as well as new companies to be created, as well as big companies to emerge from a Canadian base that can compete globally uh, w w in this space. All right, Christopher, thanks for making the time. Really good points. Thank you. Christopher Pell, Associate Professor at Polytechnique Montréal and the Montreal Institute of Learning Algorithms.